guys so welcome back to part four of our inventory drop down you could say a series of part 17. now it's getting lengthy as i said um, go and watch our previous video that explains the functions we go through it like i said into part three of this video or part two of this video that i went ahead and created the inventory system because there were so many workable variables that i had to work with and to make sure things were working it's difficult to code that on the fly and record that it just it, it ended up being five or six hours of the video um, and that is just absurd if you're going to try and upload that and let you guys you know go through that so this way you watch it in segments it's a lot easier right so where we left off last you should have these two functions in your inventory action your mouse functions you've got your cursor is not over your cursor is over and now we're going to go ahead and add two other sub events so i want you to first do an add a sub event for me add sub event okay and then i want you to select your inventory game items which is your family. I want you to go ahead and select this family for me. And I want you to set the con the instance variable. If you go back and we say compare an instance variable, I want you to select the quantity fam is equal to zero for me. All right, and then on that, we want to go and destroy the items. So we want to go and destroy all game items if the quantity is equal to zero. If anywhere in this game, the quantity is zero, we don't want to sit on the map. And then you can go ahead and just say destroy. Right, so that's that function with regards to anything because yeah if i go over you'll see yeah if i go over to the quantity fan and i select this item for argument's sake quantity fan is one if i change this to zero take note and i run it this is what your code does you'll see it went and destroyed that sword because we don't want to see it the sword's got no quantity in case somebody else picked it up that's the purpose of it okay so there's that sword setting it back to one that's what that piece of code does just to be very clear inventory game items because we're referring to the family if it's instance variable zero, go and destroy. Right, so the next thing, and probably the most critical thing, which is really coming to the last of our series, we still have to do the drop down, which we're gonna do in a separate video along with the tooltip, and that'll conclude. So five videos of the inventory to come. Well, one more video of five. Right, so the new one, we're gonna go and add another condition. And in this case, we're gonna add another sub event. Right here, add another sub event. And we're gonna go and create a mouse on right button click which is mine so yeah you can use whatever you like if you want to use left if you want to use a, a, a key go and use a keyboard then this is just to say i'm using the right mouse to click and select my items i want you then to go and add a sub event uh, add con sub condition sorry another condition and i want you to go and check the instance family variable against the global var toggle item okay so we just go back here to show what that looks like we select pick by unique id based on the family so i go back one for you i select the family right the game items I say pick by unique ID and then I go and check it against the global. So when you just type the word bar, it should just pop up just to be clear and go and check it against the global one. Right. Once you've gone ahead and done that, I want you to go and set the system's global variable to the itinerary game items one because now we're filling it because we know which one we're dealing with in question. So basically we click back and we go set a value and we're going to set the global variable, which is the category in this case. And we're going to go ahead and set it to the families category. So we're going to go inventory underscore game items because this is the family we're going to be working with now. The games items, not the inventory items, game items. And that will be to the instance variable of item type family. Right, so once you've gone and done that, go and add another event for me. And we're going to go and call the inventory update function. That's the function, our function that we created in our last video, the first function. Right, the one that does the sorting for us. Okay, so you go and call that function and then you should just have that code with that. Then I want you to go and add a sub event for me. All right, and this is going to be a for each. So let's go ahead and add a sub event. Sub event. And I want you to select system for me and then a for each order. So if you click on your system, back, click on system, for each ordered. And I want you to select an object, which is our square object. Select the object slot we can question. So we call upon the object and the instance variable and we can keep it to ascending. So once you've gone ahead and done that, go and set the global variable to the slot. So we add a new action, we click on system and we go and set value and we set the global value, which is the var inventory sort slot ID to the object ID, to the object slots ID. So we're going to make sure that they are equal. All right. Once you've done that, we can go ahead and add a sub event add another sub event and it's important to look at the tier drop down here guys when you're using add a sub event it means i'm dropping down okay so this is a sub event so your box must be to the right of this okay it's very important i forgot to mention that 
So here we do a few things. Here we go and check the slot name is equal to the inventory game items name. That's the first condition we want to check. So let's go ahead and add that condition. Once you've done that, we want to then take the families, right? So we're taking the family here of the inventory items and we're checking its instance variable called slot ID underscore fam and we're comparing it to the object one so that we know that that block is in question. So we're going to compare it against this block. So we're going to go compare that instance variable against the object slot ID. We're making sure that the slot ID, so we, there's no room for error here. You don't have to have this condition as well, but I'll just put them in because we want to make sure it's tight. Then we do it again and we compare the family against the global category family. Right, so comparing instance variables, that's all we're doing here in this. Right, once you've gone in there and handed that, we need to add a stop loop because we want to stop this loop for, for looping through because we've already found it. So we can stop it, otherwise it's going to continuously run through the memory. We're going to go add a system. We type in loop, loop, and we say stop loop. Okay, so you stop the loop. We then go and add to the constants, to the, to the, to the instance variable. We go and select the quantity fan and we go and add the world quantity fan to it. Okay, the instance variable. Okay. And then we go ahead and we call the function again. So you can go up here and copy this, right click and say copy, paste, and you can drag it down and then put the inventory update function in there again. Okay, because now we're doing it after we've done it, we need to call upon the inventory to update it. After it's updated, we need to go and set the inventory games item family, subtract the world quantity from the quantity fam because we've now added it, it's run the function, it's populated it, it's come back, it's now in by inventory, but we need to go and set the game because now, once I've added it, what is it going to do? This is what this code does. Take note, when I click add, it makes it disappear. Why? It subtracted the quantity from that. So if I go to my inventory and I go to my potions, there it is. Okay. So that is what that code does. So once you've gone and added it, you've added it now to the inventory. Now we subtract it to make it disappear. Okay. So we subtract from an instance variable quantity band with the global variable right so once you've gone ahead and done that i want you then to go to your to your condition that you have here and or onto this one rather above here and i want you to go and add an else click add else and that's going to be your system else that you're going to see right so if this takes place else do the following all right this i mean then else do that then inside your else i want you to add a sub event Note the drop down, and then we're going to basically say inventory game items. The inventory game items we want to choose an instance variable, we want to compare, we want to make sure that it's less than the, the sort priority. Now, this is just the sorting priority. We don't even need this function, but we're going to keep this function for now because I'm going to add alphabetical sorting. Uh, I'm going to add uh, a little arrow sorting. I'm going to add some nice stuff because some RPGs they really get intense. Okay, so we'll add sorting here, and this is what we do now with this one. So, yeah, we're going to go add inventory game sorting. Um, which is basically we're selecting the family, the instance variable, we're comparing this sort prior fan that it's less um, than the object slots prior, okay? And then basically we're doing this, basically what we did here. So we're going to go system loop, we're going to stop. We're then going to call two functions. First one is the inventory item move backwards function, right? Go to your functions, and this closes. We're calling the items backwards function, right? This just arranges the slots, guys, these things, all right? Right after that, we are putting it back into the inventory. We're running the inventory put item. Does the, you know, putting it into the respectable categories to make sure that the sword doesn't go into the weapons and the potions don't go into the, sorry, the potions don't go into the weapons and the, the weapons don't go into the potions. It goes and runs this function. So I'm gonna just minimize that again. So we put it into the slot. We wait zero seconds. We then go and call the update function. The update function then goes and resets everything. It is our go-to function. Once we've clicked update, we then, because you just basically add event here, you just go functions there, guys, when you're adding your functions. And they should be out there by default because you created your functions. They're in the list of functions, eh? just to be clear. And then we go and basically subtract the world quantity from the quantity fam again. So inventory, same as what you did here. Basically, this item here, you can um, copy this item and paste it right there. Right, I'll explain that item. Okay, so once that's done, I want you to scroll up. You can minimize this then. And I want you to go up to this event here again, or, uh, yeah, we've already got the fan, so that's okay. Right, so that is just our sorting of our slots, guys. It's as simple as that. 
there's nothing else to it. We're gonna add others. In this else, we're gonna add a number of else's as we go, and that will have all the different sorting. So that is it for our inventory action. So once you've got the inventory action, you're pretty much good to go. The last things we need to do, I'm gonna just minimize all of this to make sure we've covered it. We've covered our functions, inventory uh, buttons we've done, and now it is our inventory on created. Right, so on created, we're going to add a new sub event, uh, sub group, and we're gonna say system on start of layout. So we select the system, we go on start of layout, and we select our dictionary as a new, we add another on this one. We go and say add a sub event, and we go and create, if our dictionary, I've got this dictionary that we added in video one, scroll to the side here, and show you what this looks like. Where is our dictionary? Items dictionary, there it is. I call it items properties underscore, you know, underscore properties, okay. So what I'm doing here on the item properties is a few things. When it's empty, which it is, I can. this is gonna control my data for it. So I, I, I started with a break first. I just put the word break and I say I'm running up and I put the word potions. This just means that it tidies up the database. It just says this is my potions for you. I haven't tidied it neatly yet, but I've used two breaks to, to, to distinguish between weapons down below and then obviously the potions. Then the first thing I went and did was I said name underscore ID underscore manner. This ID underscore manner comes from the naming conventions and you need to do the same. The naming conventions that come from our objects. So if we go, yeah, remember we have this ID underscore manner, ID underscore poison, make sure you use the same naming conventions there. So where I've got name underscore ID, I want you to have name underscore and then whatever it is that you put there. Right, and then give it its real name. So I said, yeah, mana potion. This is where I now give it its real name. You're gonna see this in the toolbox. All the stuff that we're doing here is to, to use in the toolbox. So just do it as well, because I think it's important. So yeah, with the priority sort, I went in the prior underscore sort, and then I did the ID mana. Put in whatever you had here as well. Okay, but make sure you put this here. And there I set the value to one. The potion type, mana, it's a spell potion. So I had a potion type, underscore, and there's that ID that I have in my objects. Over here. Okay. Right, so you get what I'm doing. So I went ahead and did that for everything. If I go to the swords, I did the same for the swords. I said name, underscore, ID, and I had my rusty sword. And then I gave it its proper name, rusty sword, because this is the name that's going to appear in the game. I don't want this to appear in the game because I'm using variables. So that's the name. That's why we use the dictionary, giving its real name. So go and have a look here, I've set this, you don't need to go and all set this, but you'd have to. If you wanted to look nice, and we can use the text that I'll show you in our next video, um, which will probably be coming out next week uh, with regards to the different um, the different uh, drop downs and the, the tool tip, okay? So I'll, I'll populate this a little bit later. But what we need to do is on game creation, so we've got the system on start layout, Sorry, yeah, I want you to go and add a, a sub event and I want you to call each one. So I've got my, in other words, when this game starts on creation, when this things are on the game itself, it needs to go and do a few things. So here I said, wait a few seconds. I select the first one, which is the game, the, the potions. You'd have to do this for each one. I said, if the potions on creating or the potions, so I just go right click and I say on created. So I select that one, obviously, and I just go on created. When the game is created and this thing is created, right? It's, it's obviously placed here now, but when it starts the game and I click play, it means uncreated, that's when that function runs. I want to wait zero seconds. Then I want to select this game function, this one in question, and then I want to do a few things. I want to take the family name, this is where I set the family name. Take the family name and I want to go and get it from the dictionary. So I click on items properties dot get, and I go and fetch the name, I just put the name underscore and then I go and get the animation name. Okay, because I know it's the animation name that is this name. Okay, so do that with equipped uh, family as well. Make sure that the, the potion game is referring to the potion game. So always a good way to check is check your potions game, potions game, potions game, potions game. You know that this is correct. All right. And that is why I use the underscore here, guys. It's a very important underscore. Okay. Because it's going to go and match it. It's going to go and fill this for you. It's going to fill this whole variable for you. That's then going to be this variable here, and then it knows how to go and place the value into the actual into the actual instance variables. So make sure the naming conventions are right. If you're if you're missing an underscore, it's not going to work. The inventory system won't work well. 
well with name but not so much the sword value but the name has to be and the equipped type name these two cannot have errors in them okay name equipped you don't need the sort but put the sort there for now because we're going to use it later all right so again on created so you need to do each one of those four that belong to those families and go and create it and once you've done that and you've you've created those you basically are good to go and if we go ahead and play that as we've seen we can then open our inventory you should then see if you click on it, it should default your your category first on our buttons function and if you go and select them all you should have no problems at all right guys so that is the video so just to recap as i said over onto our main we've got our on created inventory functions that happens on creation we're going to be working with this quite big with regards to the different you know description what the swords do you know the healing properties of the potions we're going to be taking from here we do have another dictionary under data you could go and place it here uh, your new one but let's separate this this handles other things for the game itself let this dictionary items dictionary do the inventory handling for us that way it's a lot more tidier okay we've got our four functions that you need to have you've obviously got your three layers that you need to have that need to be set to global don't forget your layers you've got your four global uh, instance variables and that should be you should work straight off the bat there shouldn't be any quarrels with that as i said guys i'm sorry that i had to jump ahead uh, as per you know the other videos we, we did it line for line but as you can see this is a lot more in-depth animal and it just required so much time and doing it this way is easier as well as it helps me explain more opposed to just typing and you hear me banging away on the keyboard uh, this way you're actually learning and uh, it's a better way of getting the information across to you but our other videos will go back to obviously you know off the fly coding as i quite more enjoy but this was just a lot more thinking behind the scenes and a lot of trial and error to actually get it to work correctly um, so that would have just consumed everyone's time on the on the video all right guys i hope you enjoyed it our next video is going to be our drop of the items back onto the stage so we're basically going to go over to our stage and once I've added the items, I'm also going to add a range. In other words, I can't just right click everything. I have to come over the sword, you know, um, very close and then click on it. So we'll do a range detection. But the range detection is really simple. We just basically do that over onto our buttons here and where we've got our, sorry, our action over onto our inventory action. All we're going to do is right on here, add another condition. We're going to add another condition so that when you right click and you want in question and player must be within range of this then you will um, be able to pick that item up so i'll add that in the next video and then after that the drop down of the items and that will conclude our inventory system so thank you for your patience and guys if you're new to this channel if you can hit the subscribe always appreciate the love and the little thumbs up so that others can find it and we'll catch you guys in the next one